You know, it's a, a pleasure actually to be standing next to such a legend, Tony Christian, and to see what you guys are putting together here at Pro Stock Rescue. I'm excited for you. I am. I'm glad that you're actually coming back into the seat of a race car again. Well, first, Tooch, I've known you for 40 years and legend your ass. Okay. Second, I really am. I'm anxious, and I hope wherever I'm racing, you're announcing because you do a pretty good job. I hate to say it. I am pretty good. Actually, I am one of the guys that helped make you famous in your second comeback. Oh, God almighty. You remember that? No. You can hear it now, right? No. Ladies I... and gentlemen, there he is in the 57 Chevrolet. You know, you were the only guy I knew that had a 57 Chevrolet and towed your race car to the track for the 57 Chevrolet black. Well, you are old. I mean, that was... God, 48, 58. 1969? Isn't that 15? something? I was born in 62. That's amazing that I would know all those things. It's called research. Wow. I now, what was it, J-Stock? or F What were your champion at Great Lakes Dragway back in the day? That's when I really did watch you. I'm sorry. Formula to... Stock. I mean, that was fun Formula. racing up there. I mean, it was fun. We used to have fun. But this is going to be neat. This is going to be mean, incredible. This is going to be neat. I can't wait to get out here, okay, and ruin everybody's life. <laughs> the races in this class. Oh, here I mean, it comes. it's going to be fun. It's going to start. People are going to have to start spending a little bit of money on this thing to be competitive. It's going to be and something. It, are you being actually fitted for the seat of this automobile that we're looking at? Or are you? I mean, because I know you have a, a, a whole fleet of cars that either they're in someone else's garage or your own that you usually drive for people. But well, we're fitting it up. I'm going to start driving it first and Scott Vanning will start driving it. Awesome. It started for me in grade school, looking at the magazines and I grew up in the muscle car era. Well, in grade school it would be before that, but I always had an interest in cars from the kid model cars and engines and all that. So I knew that's what I really, really wanted to do. Well, by the time um, eighth grade came across. I already had a 55 Chevy before I had a driver's license. I was taking cars apart. I was in junior high school and I was working on high school or the high school guys' engines in the car, rebuilding engines. You know, they'd bring the cars over. I'd take transmissions out. I was, you know, pretty ahead of most of the kids my age, I thought. Well, the drag racing was the thing I wanted to do. Be looking at Hot Rod Magazine, Car Craft Magazine. This was, this was it for me. Well, I get my driver's license, my first car, a, a 66 Chevelle, 396, 375 horse, that was it. I started taking that to Union Grove, and that got me really set for drag racing. Soon after, I took the, I put that car back, you know, made it a street car again, and I bought the 68 Nova and made that a B-modified production, NHRA race car. That's where I met Tony, and Tony and I got together, we immediately became friends. Tony helped me a lot with the racing side. You guys go way back too. I mean, that, oh. to bring back history, to even make this even that much better for a show, you guys go back to when Pro Stock was cutting its teeth. Oh yeah, that was the... Eight. When you had real teeth. You remember? That's what I'm saying, when they were cutting their teeth. When you had the real teeth back in the day. I, don't get sad. You know, there are some guys that still love you out there. I happen to be one of them. But I would tell you what. I remember vaguely sitting at the top end of Great Lakes Dragway, and Benny was just like a fender or two ahead of your old black car, and you were in the right lane. Do you remember that night? Yeah. I met Scott as a kid, as a kid. Scott's five years younger than me. When I first met him, these kids were all with their street cars, and I mean, just out, they, none of them knew anything at that time. I mean, they've all progressed now, believe me. But I used to go over and kind of laugh at them all, Okay, with their slow cars and helped them all, and then they progressed. Okay, and started, you know, I started showing them a little bit of what I know, and then Scott got real good at doing things. Scott got real good at painting and started dating my sister, which I didn't like. Okay, you never like anybody who's a friend of yours dating your sister. But anyway, they were together for a long time. We just became real good friends. We raced together, then he went to work for an engine shop. This engine's by Gary Brown, and he would do some work for me. So that's how we became friends. I mean, we, he and I have been friends for, God, 40-some years also. I mean, just, you know, pretty close friends. It's going to be cool. It may happen again. Remember one thing in this life. A broken clock is right two times a day. <laughs> okay, so shit happens. <laughs> All right. And it'll only happen once. 
Somebody's going to beat me in this deal. And then the books will be rewritten. I always told everybody my favorite cars were the Pro Stock cars. I love those cars. The early stuff where it's Bill Jenkins, it's Sox and Martin. That's what we grew up on. We'd go to the local races to see those guys. You became friends with all of them. I was more, more off of the side. Just, these are the guys. Well, Tony raced with them. So I told friends of mine, boy, if I ever raced again, I really would like to do the pro stock stuff. Not what they're doing today. It's too expensive. It, it didn't even interest me. Well, there's some guys that were racing here in some of the older cars that were trying to do the nostalgic stuff, but it was sort of not a really good attempt. And I told them, you know, I, I'd kind of like to do this. So I'm thinking about it, thinking about it. I get the idea, geez, maybe like pro stock rescue, you know, rescue the car, start it over. I call Tony, what do you think? Uh, I don't know, <laughs> you know? And, <laughs> and I keep going, well, look, we'll build a car, we'll, 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 we'll put a, a, a series together, all this. Started to get him interested, but I knew I had to get him up here to really look at it. So that's kind of where we are at this point. We decided to team up and do this. We're different than anybody else. We're not just a few guys going to the tracks, oh, let's race some old pro stock cars. We're trying to show how you build the car, all the aspects of it, everything you do. And we're doing it together. And we raced when we were 18, in our 50s. And now, I don't know, how old are we now? <laughs> we're doing it again. And I did say to Tony, this is the last time I think I can drive. I mean, if I don't do it now, I can't do it. You started a little in the beginning said, I don't know, you might just be, do you really want to do this? I told them. I said, I got three people bitching at me about this <laughs> driving again. And I told my wife. I, she goes, well, what if I say I'm going to leave you if you drive again? I told her, I said, I'm going to miss you, honey. Okay, goodbye. I'm Mark Pappas, and I'm uh, encouraging you to watch Pro Stock Rescue. The group of uh, people in Pro Stock Rescue, it, it's really interesting. Um, it's not like, hey, I just have an idea, and I'm going to try to track down some people that want to do this. I was fortunate because I have a lot of friends that I raced with years ago, and mainly Tony Christian and I have raced on and off so many years, so I knew Tony would be really somebody I'd want to focus in to see if I could talk him into going racing again. Then I go, well, I want to build my own car. I want to do it myself, the Rear Morrison car. Now, I know we have David Rear at Rear Morrison's help, but that's not going to help me get the car done. So the, sort of the engine side of it, pretty easy to do. Have Tony talk to David Rear. We have an engine. We get that together. I, I, I'm thinking, we, now I need to build a car. So Woody Mays was a friend of mine that worked with me at Ronnie Kaplan Engineering. 1973, 1974, 1975. Ronnie Kaplan Engineering, uh, Greg Kaplan was running it. They built some of the first pro stock cars, really sophisticated pro stock cars for the days. Um, Woody Mays and Greg Kaplan built the race cars and I ran the engine shop there. We became great friends. I worked on the pro stock cars with them. We'd be both, they'd be helping me in the engine shop. We became great friends, we all worked together. I thought, boy, if I could track down Woody, I knew he was in the area, that would be the guy to build chassis with me, because we worked together. I called Woody, gave him an idea of what I was talking about, he got all excited, and he was just about ready to stop building race cars. He just, 40 years, he had his fill of it. He has built so many cars, he goes, he thinks he's about done. I explained what I wanted to do, instantly he goes, I'm in, I'm on board. So for the past six months, Woody and I, three, four days a week, 10 hour days, step by step, rebuilding this Camaro. September, right around mid-September, mid Scotty called me, told me he had bought an 81 uh, Camaro, uh, big block car and everything, power glide transmission, and he wanted me to come take a look at it. So I drove down here and took a look at the car. We had it up on jack stands. I was a little leery of it, but we decided we would take it up to Union Grove, 
and see if Scotty, before he spends any more money on this car, really wanted to pursue this, if he was interested in it. Uh, he had drove a bunch in the past when we were way back in the days. So we took him up with Union Grove for the day. He made three or four hits in the car. Every time he got out, he was kind of smiling. He didn't have big eyes or anything. He was content with it. So we decided to bring it back and take it apart, take a look at it. And that's when both him and Bob had been talking about running this Nostalgia Pro Stock. So we decided we would go through the car, get NHRI out here to take a look at it, see what we had to change to make it legal by today's standards. And they came out here and told us pretty much we had to start over to get it legal. Okay, so that's when we made the decision to go ahead and bring a jig down to Scott's shop, put it up on there and just totally disassemble it and take out everything. But I think we left in maybe a half a dozen of the existing tubes from when Don Hardy built it in 1981. Tony Christian, after his second round win, says, I hope I get to race Butch Leal. Well, he gets his wish. There is Butch Leal on the far lane of the Trans Am. Tony Christian in the near lane of the Chevrolet Beretta. They are both ready to go. And it is Leal reacting first, but only by two hundredths of a second. Tony Christian is right there with Butch Leal. What a... It is Butch Leal. But they run identical the last time. I, and I'm going to be all serious, because I know when you get in a car of such nature, you turn into part of the car. You do. You, and everyone can see you joke and laugh around. But I seen the other side all the years, 28 years of announcing, following half of that with your career in Pro Street and the championships you got. And even I remember you racing Pro Stock for the gravel, uh, crushing car. You won the cha You won an Oscar that year. Yeah. Is it a Beretta? Yeah. Yeah. I remember you bringing it to the Grove and making a few runs. But all joking aside, I know when you get in a car because my whole dream, my whole life, before I was this fat guy, I was a fat kid, but I always wanted to be one of those drivers. Well, and you probably also wanted to turn out to be cool. You started out way too late in life. I had an and orange crate, Schwinn. And up that way. I had the orange crate with this, the motorcycle wheel, and that didn't help. I well, played the drums. I had my own parades around the block when I was a kid. Are you about done? No. Because I'm getting pretty close to being done with this interview with you. And I'm really anxious to see this thing and see how it turns out and see how this little group that we're going to get going in this Pro Stock Rescue team turns out. Let me tell you, Pro Stock Rescue, you're in for a treat. If we bring back the guys from Pro Stock yesteryear, look out. They're going to fill the seat. Well, we're going to bring back, I mean, Larry Morgan's going to help us with this. Wow. Okay. I mean, I'm there was proof that a big guy could drive, right or wrong. I mean, he lost a leg to get back in a car. Oh, yeah. Not I mean, lost a leg, literally, but he lost a lot of weight. I think he might have had a lap band. I'm not sure. But, but I mean, there's people out there that, you know, older people, well, older people, our age, I mean, the older, that I can bring out of the gutters again and have them start racing. It'll be neat. You know, it's going to be neat. And before you get the helmet on that hair, tell us a little bit about that. It looks so good. I mean, I saw you a few years back and you were going a little gray, but your hair is just wonderful. critical thing that I do on a daily basis. <laughs> it's not that simple. There is no one particular thing. First off, you have to remember, every day I go to work, when I do my job, I'm not only accelerating somebody to 200 plus miles an hour, I'm slowing them down. And if they turn the car over, I've got to protect them. And in all of that, I've got to make them winners. I have to give them something they can use that's adjustable, that is strong enough to repeat from run to run to run and get the job done so they can win. Because the object of the game here, first off, is to win. In my book, that's the definite first thing. But along with that, winning, 
have to survive anything that can happen in the process. And there is no, absolutely no guarantee that anything can't get you at any particular time. So my main emphasis is not only on making the car accelerate, making the car stop. I want to make sure if anything happens that nobody gets killed. That's the biggest thing.